Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. So I'm back to do an April wrap up. If you saw the last video that I posted, which was at the beginning of April, I basically said that I was going on a break and I didn't know how long that break was going to be slash if it was going to be an ending or whatever of this channel. And I genuinely thought I was never going to come back and make videos again. <laughs> but I think that I, that was just like my own sort of like depression, anxiety, you know, coming to the forefront, but I think I genuinely needed a break and uh, I'm really glad that I took a break. But now that I finished some books, I'm like, oh, I kind of want to talk about them, which is, you know, the point. And I think is just clear that like, you know, it's good to take breaks sometimes. And also I think I needed to make that video and kind of say those things to uh, give myself permission to take a break and to give myself permission to slow down and like change how I'm doing things and things along those lines. I will say like I have finished some books, but I definitely have not finished as many books as I have read in like previous months this year or how I was reading it all last year, but I'm honestly okay with that. I'm genuinely really happy that I just finished stuffed and I finished more than one thing, which is also just like amazing. I think I needed to like lower the standards for myself and then also I think I needed to give myself permission to not make videos. Obviously I know that you all are very kind and supportive and are just happy that I talk about books sometimes online and you're not like holding me to any sort of like schedule or anything along those lines. Part of the uh, joy, I'm putting saying joy sarcastically, of making things on the internet is that like all of these platforms want you to be constantly posting things and it can hurt your channel or platform or whatever uh, if you're not posting regularly. And so that's always kind of in the back of every creator's mind, I think. And it's definitely in the back of my mind. And so like taking a break made me wonder whether or not coming back would be easy or worth it or whatever. But after like finishing a handful of books, I was like, you know, I can make a basic April wrap up and you know, just kind of like go with the flow with however May goes. In April, I was able to finish four books, which honestly, I'm so, so happy about after going through basically all of March unable to finish anything. The number of books that I did not finish, like I started them and immediately gave up on them, is significantly higher than that, the number of books that I did finish. But I think that, again, this, this is part of the process of coming out of a reading slump. There's one book in particular in this group that I'm really really enjoyed that made me want to make this video. The rest of them were like solidly okay. <laughs> and so when I was going through the month and I was reading these books I didn't think I was going to make like an April wrap-up. I thought maybe I would do like a quarterly wrap-up if anything. But reading this one book that I really enjoyed made me want to like talk about that book specifically a lot sooner. But I didn't have enough to do an individual book review so I was like April wrap-up that's what these wrap-ups are kind of made for. So yeah I don't know for sure again like moving forward what content will look like on my channel. I will probably just like continue to just assess things as I go which is probably how I should be handling things anyways. Also I will just say that like I'm kind of taking a general break from the internet overall. Like I haven't really been posting much on Twitter. I posted a little bit but not really. I haven't been posting on Instagram like at all and for Goodreads I haven't even been posting the books that I've been finishing on Goodreads until like the end of the month. I think that again kind of like taking a step back and not feeling the pressure to constantly be on these things has helped my brain sort of reset a little bit and enjoy the platform for the good parts without being like poisoned by the bad parts of it, specifically the parts that make you addicted and make you concerned about numbers and stuff like that. So yeah, like you're more than welcome to follow me on various so social media platforms. I've seen that like over the course of the month while I was taking a break, people have followed me. Um, and I always like feel bad when I see that notification because I'm just like, I don't even know if I'm posting on here <laughs> to make it worth it. But yeah, that's just sort of a heads up. All right, the first book that I finished in April was The Mystery of Black Hollow Lane by Julia Noble. And this is the first book in the Black Hollow Lane series. This is a middle grade series. And the reason why I picked it up is because I tried to remember the things that I would tell people when they were in a reading slump. And one of them is to like, read shorter books basically. And so I was like, I have this middle grade book checked out from the library. Maybe this will be help me like finish something because like it, like I mentioned earlier in the entirety of March, I couldn't finish anything. So I was like, let me read a middle grade book, which won't take me very long to read. Um, and then I can actually like finish something. And then hopefully that will give me the momentum I need to continue to finish books, which it did. So in the story, you are following this character named Emmy. Her father has disappeared and her mother is like 
a pretty well-known psychiatrist, I believe. She writes a lot of books about like parenting and things along those lines. Uh, but because she's so like such a big deal, she like travels a lot and does a lot of like book tours and things along those lines. So she has shipped Emmy off to boarding schools. And so at the beginning of this book, Emmy is about to get sent off to a new school. The name of the school is Wellsworth and it actually is in England. So like Emmy is originally from the United States and she gets shipped off to a boarding school in England. And so this story is kind of uh I don't want to say standard but kind of standard like boarding school story so if you are someone who enjoys boarding school stories then I think that this is a cute and fun one to pick up she gets there pretty late I think she's like in the middle of the school year or something along those lines and most of the kids who go to Wells with are kids who have like been a part of like that school system for a while and so she's kind of like the outsider learning all about this new school and all of its different like quirks and whatever and so in order to get you know more involved in the school or just to like help her get acclimated I think it's like the headmistress or something suggests that she joins this Latin club but it turns out that this Latin club is not quite all that it uh cracks up to be and there's a lot of like mystery surrounding the school and there are specifically things like potential secret societies and other things like that that Emmy is learning about and all of these things may have some connections to her own life so yeah this was a really fun cute book I wouldn't say it's anything like mind-blowingly amazing it's not doing anything that's like particularly new but if you are someone who like me enjoys boarding school stories enjoys secret societies enjoys found families like this hits all of those boxes and again it can be like very stereotypical in a way like nothing in this book surprised me nothing in this book was like wow that's a idea or a theme or something like that that I haven't thought of before but it is good at what it's doing and again it's a book that like I found really fun and engaging and it like kept my attention which in these days is like a very difficult thing to keep so I feel like on those like merits like this is a pretty good book so I would say if you want something like comforting and something familiar and again you like all of those themes that I mentioned earlier this is a really good book to pick up it is the first in a series and so like some of the mysteries that are introduced in this first book don't get resolved completely um, and it ends in kind of a cliffhanger not really but it like ends the school year it's kind of like Harry Potter where uh, you end the school year and there's still a lot of mysteries about the school and these people that you still have to solve the second book is out already and so I do have that on my list to check out soon because I did again really enjoy it and I thought it was just like a fun middle grade read. Next up I finished The Survivors by Jane Harper. Jane Harper is a mystery writer who I really really enjoy. I've read all of her books so far and I've really enjoyed all of them and so again trying to get out of my reading slump I try to do the things that I tell myself and that is like pick up a book you're really excited about. So I picked up Jane Harper's The Survivors because again I really enjoyed all of her previous books and so I figured this could potentially be a book that would help me get out of my reading slump because I was like really into it or whatever. I do have to say that this is probably my least favorite Jane Harper book but it's one of those things where it's like a bad Jane Harper per book so far is still a really good book and again I didn't DNF it which to all of these books they deserve some sort of credit if I didn't give up on them. <laughs> so in this book you are mainly following this character named Kieran who has returned back to his small hometown in this specific part of Australia and he is back home because like his father has dementia and his mother's been taking care of the father and they plan on like moving them to I think a nursing home type of situation or an assisted living sort of place and so he's come back to the small town to help his mother pack up their house their family and like this town dealt with a major tragedy uh, when Kieran was like in late high school or col early college something along those lines where Kieran's brother passed away and a couple of other situations happened so like Kieran's family has a lot of tragedy in its past but a couple of other families in this town were also affected by this tragedy and I don't want to say more than that because like part of the way this book is structured is sort of revealing how everyone was affected by this big event and so while Kieran and his wife and kid are back in town to help out with the situation they meet this uh, woman who is an artist working as a waitress and she ends up dying on the beach and so this event sort of like kickstarts this investigation that brings up a lot of this past event to the forefront of like everyone who has lived in this town for so long and there are starting to be some like weird connections and parallels that seem to be happening and it also like brings up all these memories and 
some unanswered questions about this past event. The story is basically the exploration of like the mystery of what happened to this woman, but also the exploration of what's the truth that happened on this night that happened, you know, a decade or more ago. So the reason why this book is probably my least favorite out of um, all of Jane Harper's books is because it hits on a lot of the same themes that her previous books hit on, but I feel like it does it slightly less successfully. And again, it might be a thing where like, because I've read all of Jane Harper's books, I'm seeing those themes and I felt like it was just better done in the other books. So if like, this is your first Jane Harper book, you might really, really enjoy this book, in which case I would say like, definitely go back and read her other books in the catalog. In general, Jane Harper tends to write slightly slower paced, more character driven books. But I felt like with this one, the slower pace felt slow for the sake of slowness. And it didn't really add anything to the way things were eventually revealed. I feel like in a book like The Lost Man, which might be my favorite Jane Harper book, that book is really, really slow paced. But you can feel that there's this like building tension throughout the course of this book that leads to these like really major reveals and things along those lines. And this book doesn't really like notch up the tension in that same way, which I think is what I was slightly expecting because it was so slow paced. Another thing is that there are a lot of different characters that you talk about in this book, because again, this like major event that happened affected a lot of different people. And there are actually like multiple mysteries almost that you're trying to solve because so many different people were affected by this past event and it's not completely clear what exactly happened on that day so like all of these different mysteries you're trying to solve along with the mystery of what happened to this woman. I think just for me personally it was just like too many mysteries and too many characters that you are trying to learn about that it doesn't feel like you get a satisfactory character development about any of them because there's too many to cover in this like span of a book. So I think that you know there are parts of this that are really compelling. There are mysteries in here and characters in here that are really compelling, but I think that there were just like too many characters and too many details and too many mysteries to make it feel as satisfactory as some of her other books, which feel significantly more like singularly focused. So yeah, again, I think that if you are a fan of Jane Harper, you will enjoy this book, but I don't think it quite uh, matches up with the skill of her previous books. But again, like I said, a okay Jane Harper book is still a pretty good <laughs> mystery book. And I would recommend her a lot as an author. I just think that this one wasn't again, my favorite out of the ones that she's written so far. All right, next up, I have the Office of Historical Corrections by Danielle Evans. This is a short story collection. And this is the book that I was teasing at the beginning as being the book that made me want to make videos again, because I really enjoyed this book a whole lot. It's funny because when I was uh, reading this book, I was like, man, this book is so underrated. But then I went on Goodreads and it has like over 14,000 ratings. <laughs> so clearly it's not really underrated, but I feel like I didn't hear a lot of people talking about this book. Like I heard some people talking about it, but I think not enough to how well this book is done. And obviously like short story collections are often harder to pitch than novels because there isn't like a singular story that you can like talk about. Like a just did with these other books. But this is a really fantastic collection of short stories. Um, this is exactly what I enjoy in short story collections where they are contemporary short stories, any sort of any sort of like speculative elements or like magical elements are kept to, you know, a minimum. Um, not that I hate those but like really weird out there short stories don't really do much for me. But this is like exactly in my wheelhouse of what I enjoy in short story collections. It's really hard again to like give any sort of summary when it comes to short story collections. All of these sort of focus on mainly women um, who have like all of these like complexities to their lives that I found to be like so fascinating. Like reading these stories, I was found with this overwhelming feeling of like, if I knew any of these people in real life, I would despise them and I would not want to know them, care about them, anything along those lines. But I was so compelled by them as characters in these stories. There's one short story about a woman, a white woman who wears like a confederate flag bikini and that picture ends up going viral on the internet and she kind of like doubles down in sort of this choice. Like when she makes the choice, it was kind of a very offhand decision that she didn't think so much about, but then because it gets such a strong reaction, she sort of like doubles down in those feelings. Um, there's a story about like a journalist who gets stuck in this town with a another journalist, I believe, um, and they end up like sharing a hotel room together and like the, nothing romantic happens, but they end up becoming friends and then she's like attending his wedding and there's like a lot of messiness that's involved in there. And the main like sort of theme sort of going through all of these stories is like the 
complexities of modern day life and kind of like navigating what type of person you are and also like what type of person other people perceive you to be and sort of how those things intersect with each other and sort of like knowing how other people perceive you and sort of letting that affect the choices that you end up making in the future and all of this stuff that I thought was just like so very poignant like this is a collection of short stories that very much feel like they're in the now so like in five ten years I'm not sure how compelling or relevant or anything like that that these stories will be but it perfectly encapsulates in my opinion sort of like these times that we're currently living in in a way that I haven't really seen uh, discussed in other ways I think that she really delves into the complexities of the stories of the people who often like you hear about online um, and we like sort of flatten their stories into this nice neat narrative where we make them a good guy or a bad guy um, based on you know our own values and beliefs but really there's a lot more often to these stories as well and it's really really well done. The final sort of story in this collection is actually a novella called The Office of Historical Corrections and you are following this woman who is a scholar and ends up working for what is basically a government agency that goes around trying to correct people or documents or anything along those lines that are making sort of like historical inaccuracies and the story kind of goes into almost the murkiness of that idea as well but also kind of explores other things too and it's just really really well done. I honestly think it's probably one of the best books I've read so far this year and I think that if you are someone who enjoys short story collections at all this one should definitely definitely be on your list. Really really enjoyed it. And the final book that I've finished in April was Frying Plantain by Zalika Reed Benta. This is another collection of short stories that's kind of like interconnected short stories. The story follows Kara who is a Canadian Jamaican. The stories are all basically just sort of like these snips or slices of her life as she figures out her own identity um, compared to like her Jamaican family as well as her identity compared to her friends and her like ambitions and sort of the choices that she's making, her relationship with her mom, all of these different things. Everything is sort of connected. It's very much contemporary. There's no like magical realism, fabulism, or speculative elements to these stories at all. Um, it's literally just slices of Kara's life over the course of like I think her first 18 years. So the very first story is of Kara as a kid when she is in Jamaica and she you know is kind of like traumatized by the things she's seeing in Jamaica. Like specifically things that are very like rural farm life sort of things like she sees a severed pig's head in the freezer and is like you know starts crying about things like that and her family and Jamaica makes fun of her for being so sensitive. And another story that I think was maybe my favorite it's about like there's a snow day at school and she's supposed to just stay at school and wait for someone to pick her up but her friends convince her to leave and they end up like going to this like restaurant and she like they notice that a boy is kind of checking her out so they tell her to go to the bathroom and fix herself up and while she's in the bathroom her friends have abandoned her and they've told this guy that she's in the bathroom waiting for her and it puts her in this very uncomfortable situation. So it's like stories like that you see like her relationship with her mother, her relationship with her grandmother, her own like sort of ambitions almost about what she wants to be doing. She like moves to different neighborhoods as her mom tries to get her into different schools. All of these sort of just like complexities of growing up. It's a really strong collection of short stories. It's not my favorite. I think I would probably give it like a three and a half star rating if I had to rate it. I did find Kara to be like a really compelling character but some of the stories were about like her grandmother and things like that which while interesting I definitely just wanted to read more about Kara and her life but it's just really a good sort of of encapsulation of like growing up as a woman but also like growing up as someone with these dual identities in this case being Canadian and being Jamaican and sort of how those things sort of conflict um, and how they connect talking about like just having a strict mother and the choices that you want to make with your life but you can't or you're choosing not to because your mother or your parents disapprove. She doesn't know anything about her father and so like that sort of complicated relationship starting to get crushes and like boys and wanting to date them and do other things with them. Just all of those sorts of feelings that come up as you're growing up, things like that. It's just a really nice collection, honestly. Again, it's not like mind-blowing. It's not the best one I've read. Obviously, like reading it off of reading the Office of Historical Col Corrections probably uh, downgraded it slightly in my brain just because that collection is so strong. But this is also a really solid collection and it's definitely one that like made this an author to kind of keep my eye on because this was a collection where because they're interconnected short stories, I could have easily 
seen any of these stories being fleshed out even more and becoming a more connected novel. Um, so if this author comes out with like a full novel in the future, I definitely would want to pick that up. So yeah, again, if you're looking for a short story collection that you maybe not have heard of before, because this, again, this one came out in Canada first, and it only has like 2000 ratings if even that on Goodreads so I know that a lot of people haven't read it yet but yeah if you enjoy contemporary short story collections this could definitely be a good one to add to your list. So that is everything I have for you all. Again I'm really happy that I finished some books in April. I feel like you know in the before times if I had just had only four books to talk about in a month I would have been really disappointed but now I have more realistic expectations of what I can accomplish in terms of reading and so yeah I am hoping that I can keep up like this sort of pace of like one book a week because I think that that's a really good pace like on Goodreads I always set my goals for uh, the year to be like 50 books because I think like one book a week is honestly like a really good pace even though like here on book two people finish like 20 books in a month yeah I think one book a week is a really good pace so yeah I'm currently in the middle of two books I'm continuing on with more short story collections and so originally I was like oh maybe I'll do like a summer of short stories sort of thing but I know even implying that already dooms me <laughs> I'll probably read like one more short story collection and then want to move on to something else. So I'm not going to actually say that. But for now, I'm still enjoying short story collection. So if I do a May wrap up, I'll probably have at least one more short story collection to talk about. So if you have any contemporary short story collections that you've really enjoyed, definitely leave a comment down below and let me know about them because I'm definitely in the mood to check out more short story collections. So like definitely leave a comment with them. So yeah, otherwise, let me know down in the comments below something that you read in April that you really enjoyed. Because again, I'm always looking for more books to pick pick up that could potentially like help punch this reading slump in the face. <laughs> that's a weird metaphor. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, tell me about some books you loved. So yeah, that's all I have for now and thanks for watching.